Here we have an ASRock FM2A85X Extreme 4 motherboard. It is based on the AMD 85X chipset. And in here we have the AMD A10 5800K processor that has the Radeon 7660 on board. And the stock frequency on the processor is 3800 MHz. And it has a level 1 cache of 320 kilobytes and a level 2 cache of 4 megabytes. And as you can see here, we have 8 gigs of dual channel DDR3 installed, and I see 512 is shared for the video at the moment. Um, that can be changed, that is just factory first boot. And you can also see the memory is only running at 1333, which is completely normal because that is actually a standard speed. Anything over that is considered an overclock. So you have to manually change that. And one other cool thing I thought, is you can see the stars in the background, I thought that was pretty neat as long as the little uh, QR code here to scan on your cell phone bring you right to their motherboards page, I am assuming. And under the OC tweaker tab, we have, you can do an manual mode, CPU OC mode, and we have CPU configurations here. Voltage, maximum frequency, multipliers, graphics engine clocks, memory configurations, you can say load your memory profiles, timings, voltage, the graphics voltage, south bridge voltage, and in the advanced tab we have CPU configuration, like cool and quiet, which for overclocking purposes, that would be disabled most likely. Thermal throttle, if it starts getting too hot, it will shut your computer down or back off on it so you don't burn it up. And Northbridge configuration, you can set your primary graphics adapter. You can set that shared memory again. Looks like it goes up to 2 gigs. And the onboard audio, turn that on and off. You can set your DVI as dual link DVI or as an HDMI output if you're using an adapter. South bridge configuration, you have onboard HD audio. You can turn your front panel audio on or off. Onboard LAN and good night LED. I am not sure what that is. But I will find out at a later time. Storage configuration, we have the SATA controller. You can set your pre mode preference, IDE, RAID, AHCI. I will be using AHCI. As you will get better performance in most cases over IDE, especially if you are using an SSD. And here we have our BIOS ROM for the RAID controller. Set an IDE combined mode, hard disk smart status, which tells you information about your hard drives, if something's failing, if something's wrong. And here you can see we have our one terabyte drive supported, which is a uh, Seagate Barracuda, 7200 RPM, just your standard mechanical drive. Serial port, serial port address, infrared port, parallel port does have a parallel header on board if you have the cable to hook up to it for an old school printer or some other device that may use it. Back. Here we have our ACPI configuration, suspend the RAM, check ready bit, uh, restore ACN power loss if you want your computer to turn back on automatically if the power goes out or if you want it to stay off. Um, PS2 keyboard power on, if you set that to on, you just push a button on your keyboard and you'll turn your computer on rather than having to push the power button. Uh, ring in power on, I believe that is like a wake on LAN type of thing. You send it a wake on LAN packet, magic packet, and it'll turn your computer on over the network. Um, also separate support here for USB keyboard turn on as well, and USB mouse power on. In the USB configuration, you can turn the USB 2.0 controller on or off. And you also have the 3.0 controller as well, and legacy USB support. 
in the tools here, we have sound effects. There must be sound in the bias. I don't have speakers hooked up at the moment. And this was a neat little feature I found while checking through before. It'll actually give you a layout of the motherboard and as you bring your mouse over each component it will tell you what's installed or if they're empty, they say empty, empty, empty. It will tell you something's plugged in like here in the SATA port, SATA 1, it's green here and the rest are all grayed out and here it is, it shows the hard drive, memory module, installed, installed, and empty, power connector, I mean it pretty much got a layout on all the main main components of the board. CPU here tells you about your processor, 8-pin connector, your south bridge or your north bridge chipset. Not really a south bridge anymore. And your uh, inputs and outputs on the back which you can also click as well and that enlarges it for you. So you can see everything on the back panel there and it will once again show you if something is plugged in like the keyboard here connected, I have a USB connected here which is the mouse and we also have our Ethernet connected. And we are using HDMI but that does not say if that's connected or not but that in fact is what we are using at the moment. Online management guard, you can actually uh, restrict internet access right from in here. So if you have kids or something you don't want them to go on at certain times, you can actually block it right from in the U UEFI or the BIOS, whatever you want to call it. Got the instant flash here that will actually try to load a BIOS image from a USB drive and try to flash it for you. And it looks like I shouldn't have clicked it because it is now looking for it and it won't stop. We have our instant flash for USB drive. You have a bias image on there. It will automatically find it and flash it for you, as well as internet flash. It will go off the internet and download the latest bias for you. I um, have network configuration here. You can do DHCP. You can do uh, PPPoE if you have to actually sign into your internet connection. Sometimes if you have like DSL. You may have to do that, and you can also choose your server, such as Asia, Europe, USA, and China. And the dehumidifier function, that is something I'm not very familiar with, but it's something to do with when you shut the computer down, it will like turn back on and start up the fans for a short time just to get out any moisture that may be in there, which is can be a pretty neat feature, I suppose. And you can save your BIOS settings. You have a first, second, or third profile. And we have the hardware monitor tab. Uh, CPU temperature 56 Celsius, which does seem to be kind of warm. I'm probably going to have to check that out. I don't think it should be that high. Just sitting here idle doing nothing. Uh, motherboard temperature, now that looks more normal, 35C. And the CPU fan is about 3500 RPMs. And our V core voltage going to the APU is 1.448. That's fluctuating a little bit. Our 12 volt voltage is at 12.144, and our 5 volt is 5.136, and our 3.3 is 3.31228, somewhere around there. Fluctuates a little bit. And we have CPU fan 1 and 2 settings. You can do full on automatic mode. And the chassis fan, open temperature protection, and case open feature. In the boot tab, you have your boot option priorities. You can set what you want to be the first boot device, second, third, and fourth, and so on. Uh, fast boot, it will speed up your boot a little bit. It actually will just skip a little bit of the test or speed them up for you. Uh, boot from onboard LAN. You have a network boot to install an OS or running an OS from a from a server, you turn that on or off. Um, setup prompt timeout, you can display how long you want it to pause for you to push the delete key to enter the bias. I mean you can set it right now, it's just set at one second, but you can increase that to like five seconds if you need more time to get in. Um, boot up number lock, if you want your number lock to be on when you boot your computer, either on or off. Full screen logo if you want to see the, the ASRock logo when you fire it up, you can have that either on or off. And we have
have boot failure guard as well here at the bottom. And boot failure guard count of three. And that is if you are overclocking and your settings are wrong and it will not boot, it will, the way it's set right now is it will do three attempts. And if that third attempt fails, it will restore back to a factory set setting and then your, your uh, computer will post for you so you can go in and make any changes that need to be done. In security, you can set a supervisor password or a user password, such as if you want a password to be able to fire the computer up, or a supervisor password as well, just to be able to make changes in the BIOS, which you really don't do a whole lot because there's a jumper right on the board. You can clear the password if you know what you're doing. And your typical exit menu, save changes and exit. You can dis discard your changes and exit. Discard changes and load defaults. And that's about it. That covers the ASRock FM2885X Extreme 4M motherboard.